where the man accused of kidnapping and murdering a local Memphis teacher appeared in court for the second day in a row today. Cleotha, now going by the name Henderson, faces charges of aggravated kidnapping, tampering with evidence, and first-degree murder. After, authorities say he abducted 34-year-old Eliza Fletcher while she was out jogging early last Friday. Henderson appeared in court on Tuesday, as you know, to be arraigned on those kidnapping charges, but then was brought back into court today to address the most recent murder charges brought against him. However, after arriving to court, an issue with his lawyer caused the arraignment to be postponed yet again. So it's our understanding he's going to be arraigned on those homicide charges tomorrow. Let me bring in now Court TV legal correspondent Chanley Painter. She's standing by live for us in Memphis with the latest details from today. Chanley. Hey, good afternoon, Julie. I'm actually on the campus of the University of Memphis, the site of where 34-year-old Eliza Fletcher was violently abducted in the early morning hours of Friday, last Friday, uh, September 2nd, around 4 a.m. So I'm going to have my photographer, Justin Pan, to show you this intersection. According to the affidavit of the police, this intersection behind me of Central Avenue and Zach Curlin here in, in Memphis, where the university campus is, you can see students it's walking across the street is the site where the defendant Cleotha Henderson, his cell phone pinged not too far from this intersection. There's, of course, cameras on the stoplights. There's cameras all around campus. There's nice sidewalks where, of course, Eliza would want to run every morning where there are street lights lining this border of the campus here at the University of Memphis. So I wanted to give you an up close glimpse of what it looks like now. Of course, she was running uh, before day daybreak on Friday. So it would have been dark in this area, not, of course, as much foot traffic. But I see a jogger right now jogging on the sidewalk where she was jogging in those early morning hours. Uh, so this is that location. And I come here, like you said, after returning from the courthouse about 20 minutes from where I'm standing, where the defendant, Cleotha Henderson, was in court today, Julie. Yeah, I wanted to ask you about that as well, please, Chanley. So today I know the hearing was brief and we've got a name change as well. Um, share with us the little bit that was put on the record, please. Well, we lined up. There's media here from all over the nation for this, what was supposed to be the arraignment of the defendant. And we lined up outside the court room once we're let in. The family of Eliza Fletcher was there. Her brother, I believe her father, and uncle, some other family members, her husband and her mother not able to be here because they are too, uh, too grieved, uh, bereaved to be here. Uh, the uh, judge took up a, a different matter first, but then all of a sudden, the defendant, Cleotha Henderson, did enter the courtroom, and the shifting in the seats of Eliza Fletcher's family was very noticeable inside the courtroom. He didn't say anything today, but the judge did say that yesterday, uh, Cleotha corrected him on his legal last name, not Abstin, but Henderson. So for the record, the judge updated his name, his legal name for that record. And then quickly, uh, the defense attorney who was appointed for the public defender's office had filed, uh, according to the judge, a motion under seal asking uh, for different representation of the defendant. So we don't know the reason why uh, prosecutors wouldn't tell us after the hearing as well it's under seal but that matter delayed the arraignment julie so cleotha henderson will be back in court tomorrow same courtroom same judge same time for his arraignment on those upgraded first degree murder charges and the judge is expected to rule on that sealed motion from defense attorneys about the uh, representation of him moving forward Understood. And I know you got into town there yesterday, Chanley, as that big news was breaking of Eliza Fletcher's body uh, being located. Obviously, the reason for now those additional charges uh, relating to the homicide being tacked on to Cleotha, now Henderson's indictment. Um, I know you've been talking to people since you got into town. What are they saying to you and how are they reacting to the situation? This, of course, has garnered headlines all over the world. Uh, when I was at the site of where her body was discovered yesterday, there was international media at that scene, Julie. So this is something that has really grabbed the hearts, not only of people who live here in Memphis, but across the nation and the globe. And as I've been in the community, as I've been to the key scenes of this crime, I've been talking to community members, and particularly at the site 
where her body was found. People would drive by uh, just to take a look. I would talk to them and they would tell me how shocked they were, how, how much their hearts go out to Eliza's family. I also caught up with a one woman who was there with her goddaughter and she said that she spent the entire weekend uh, in her car, uh, going through the neighborhoods and the areas of where that suspect, this defendant had been arrested on Saturday, where he lived, where his family lived, because she wanted to help find Eliza. Let's take a listen to what she told me. He should have never been able to get back out. And my thing now, he's getting three, three meals in a cot. Why keep him in jail? I can't say what I want to say, but you know where my mind going. But you know, God sits high and look low. His day coming. She taught my niece. It touched me because I take care of people. And I help people out and I was like, you know, it was, it was hurting to see he, you know, she out doing what she love to do. And you took it upon yourself to, to snatch this lady. Me and my goddaughter, we rode from that Friday all the way up until just like last night, I was by myself when they said they found her. And on Sunday, we came to this very location. I kept telling the FBI and the police, she's somewhere close. For him to get, you know, that close to his brother's house, she's somewhere close. We actually drove in this driveway and sat probably about 10 or 15, 20 minutes. I was fit to get out. My goddaughter was like, don't get out the car because we don't have flashlights. And the field was kind of high, and then she was like, you don't know what's, you know, behind the house. And, it, you know, it was kind of hurting and shocking to me to come back, and it's the same location we was just at Sunday, and then they turned around and found her yesterday. And that's just one sample of the people I've talked to even here when I have been here talking to students who cross this intersection, this area, those who are so surprised that something so violent would happen in this area. They said they would feel safe to jog here at this uh, part of the campus here on the university. When I was here yesterday, I actually uh, spoke to a neighbor, uh, the man that you're seeing right now hanging a reef on this uh, the light post at this intersection, which has since been taken down. But he lives three doors down from where Eliza and her husband and her two boys lived. And he, through tears, Julie was telling me about how amazing of a person she was, a teacher she was, a mother she was. She said, he said that she was an heiress to a billionaire grandfather, but chose to be a kindergarten teacher. He, could, he told me, go drive by her house, which is just four miles to where I'm standing right now, where she would run, Julie. And he said, go look at her front, the front of her house, and you can see what was important to her. And Julie, in front of her house, toys, a big dump truck that her boys probably played uh, with a sandbox in her front yard and that front huge window that would be like a formal dining room was a playroom. There's crafts and arts, colorings uh, hanging on her front window of her beautiful home here in Memphis and it, it just tells you all you need to know about who Eliza Fletcher was. Oh, isn't that the truth, Chanley? Oh my gosh. Um, you know what you just said, that gives so much perspective to the story. This is somebody who didn't have to work but wanted to work because she wanted to make a difference uh, for all of those children that she taught. And um, clearly, as the evidence you know, shows that you saw today outside the house, I mean, what a, what a devoted mother. And oh, um, I know your heart breaks, as do all of the people you know, watching this case closely. Our hearts go out to those kids. Um, do you know her? Have you heard about how old the boys are? They are quite young, uh, to toddler to you know elementary school age, uh, young boys, uh, very cute. And um, I want to also mention that I, I spoke. Now, the prosecutor in charge of this case is a familiar face at Court TV, Julie Paul Hagerman, who prosecuted Billy Ray Turner in the Lorenzen Wright murder. I caught up with him today. Of course, he's a big fan of Court TV. Uh, Julie, uh, he, I asked him about the family because he's met with them over the last several days. And he had tears in his eyes, the prosecutor Paul, about meeting the boys and her husband and he said her husband obviously could not be there today uh just too too saddened but he said he had to tell his two boys yesterday and uh, the prosecutor couldn't even finish his sentence because he started crying the heaviness of this uh it's just such, such a senseless tragedy julie and it's really affecting uh, like a, an avalanche of, of this story affecting those ripple effects across uh, this community Oh, you're absolutely right, Chanley. Because, you know, I think one thing we talked a little bit about it, this on the show yesterday, how 
it could be anybody, you know, it could be anybody, you know, who is taken. I mean, here she's on a run, just going about her business, part of her routine, you know, thinking she's, you know, doing something healthy. You never suspect um, that there, uh, you know, there are predators out there. Um, Agent Ted Golden, who I know you're familiar with, said on the show yesterday, evil never sleeps. And uh, there are people looking to do other people harm uh, all hours of the day. Uh, it is just dreadful. I wanted to also ask you, please, Chanley, about uh, the press conference uh, following the hearing today. Uh, for anybody who might have missed that, what were the big uh, takeaways, please? Sure. The district attorney here, a newly appointed one, uh, Steve Mulroy, took the time to speak to the media along with Paul Hagerman as well and, and fielded a lot of questions about what's next in this case. Uh, a few key takeaways, Julie. They are not releasing or commenting on any time or cause of death now that her body was discovered on Monday. Uh, they also aren't talking about any potential sentence they may pursue because here in Tennessee, uh, first degree murder, one of the possible punishments is death, is the death penalty. Uh, so they were asked about that. They, it's too early in the game to even talk about uh, what they may pursue here because, again, it's uh, they're going to wait for a bond hearing. There could be a preliminary hearing. And then also the grand jury still has to indict, according to Paul Hagerman here in the state of Tennessee. So uh, it's still very early. Uh, but they did talk about the history, the criminal history of this defendant who goes back when he was a juvenile and why he was released early from a charge of kidnapping, a conviction on kidnapping. And of course, they also talked about the family. Let's take a listen. What would you say to people who are following this story and saying, based on what we do know about this suspect's prior record, what do you say to people who think he shouldn't have been on the street at all? Well, I mean, you know, uh, it's easy to talk about things in 2020 hindsight. In this particular case, uh, clearly he should not have been on the street. Our office actually opposed uh, parole at the time. Um, we now know in hindsight, you know, perhaps uh, the, the, the parole decision was um, a tragic one. We, we, we will only be able to speculate as to what other thing he may have done had he served his full term. You've, you've had a chance to talk to the family. I mean, how are they responding to, to the last couple of days? What are they going through right now? Well, you know, obviously uh, they're in agony. They were in agony for the first couple of days when they didn't know the fate of Liza. And then different type of agony once uh, her fate was confirmed. Um, they are have been cooperating fully with us and with law enforcement throughout the entire process. Uh, they're supporting each other. They really appreciate the outpouring of uh, concern from the entire community. Um, and, uh, you know, I think just to, in general, they're pre preferring to keep to themselves, have their privacy respected, and go through their own grieving process. So again, tomorrow we expect the family members there today to return for that delayed arraignment. Again, 10 a.m. Eastern, the defendant will be back in court, Julie. He'll be arraigned on his upgraded counts of first-degree murder, first-degree murder in the perpetration of kidnapping, especially aggravated kidnapping, and of course, tampering with evidence, as that affidavit details, at least two people witnessed him cleaning out that black SUV we've seen caught on surveillance video that uh, was the car used to abduct Eliza Fletcher, Julie. Uh, just dreadful allegations, Chanley. Thank you so much for all of that, Chanley Painter, live for us there in Memphis, Tennessee, on the ground as this case continues developing. We will keep you posted.